We haven't looked at the Islanders top five prospects in a while. So let's take some time now to look at who are the top five prospects in our prospect pool. Hit that subscribe button. Do not miss the video. Also go to Twitter, follow at Tilo Mitch. That's me. Don't miss any breaking information about Islanders prospects I've yet to cover on the channel. The last time we looked at the Islanders top five prospects was when Atoratu was traded to Vancouver. And that was like a month and a half ago, right? Like end of January, beginning of February. We're now middle of March. So there may have been some movement within the top five prospects or or maybe the top five guys have gotten significantly better all at once or, or not. So let's take a look at who the top five prospects are in the prospect pool. And now if you're new to the channel, I base these rankings off of NHLE. And NHLE is a great statistic for normalizing production across various leagues in the world. Uh, and it all bases that off of how many points would a player be expected to per, uh, to produce at the NHL level in their first year in that competition after coming over from wherever they are? And so it's a really great way of normalizing and differentiating at the same time. And so that's how I base my rankings. And without further ado, here are the previous rankings. What they looked like when Aturatu was had just been traded. It was Ishikov at 24, Maggio 22. These are their NHLE. They're expected to perform 24 points at the NHL level in year one. Maggio at 22, Tsfog at 20, Arnaud Durando 19, and Alex Jeffries at 19 as well. Okay, well, how has it changed since? Well, this, whoops, I'm not clicking on the right thing here. This is what it looks like now. Today, our top five guys are still Russian Ishikov at 26 NHL. He's gone up by 0.2 as I, as I uh, write there. William Tsufol, number two, has gone up to 22. He's also improved. Matthew Maggio has lost two NHLE. And I think that's more of a computational error uh, with, with my, my, as, um, my model, if you will, than anything else. I, I think I was looking at the wrong number or, or the algorithm that I use may have been incorrect because I try to take points away from older prospects who tend to do better at, at these AHL levels. So I, I try to dock these older players. And for some reason, I think I was amplifying Matthew Maggio instead of anything. Anyways, it, it has been rectified and he's at, at 20 and probably should have been at 20 the last time out. So he lost two. Um, Arnaud Zerando has gone up by one at 20 and Samuel Bodzuk is now in the top five at 19. Uh, that's just because Alex Jeffries didn't score a point in his last game and it brought him down just below 19 at 18.1. I can't even round it up to 19. And so that's why Alex Jeffries isn't there, but he's, he's right below it at number six. So let's take some time to look at these prospects individually. We won't take four hours, but let's look at what they're doing right now and how they're growing as a prospect, not only this year, but over the last couple of years. The top prospect in the Islanders prospect pool is, of course, Russian Shkov with 41 points, sorry, 46 points in 56 games at the AHL level. Incredible stuff. Leads the AHL in points for rookies. The fact that he's got 15 goals on the year is impressive to me because he's not necessarily what you would call a goal scorer. That, that's just not his main attribute, if you will. He's more of a playmaker than anything else. But the fact that he's got 15 goals on the year, hey, he can pop him in too. And of late, he's clearly said, maybe not with words, I want a call up. When you look at his last like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 games he's got, we're going to do some more math here. Seven, eight, nine, that's 12, 13, 14, 15 points in his last 13 games. My man is looking for a call up. And when you see what he does, not only in the shootout, we've all seen that shootout goal, but just in open play, this goal that he scored yesterday off a really nice bank pass from Williams Zafo that you're not seeing here, but heck of a play by Williams Zafo to send Ishikov into that open ice that he was attacking regardless. He was going there no matter what. He assumed Zafo was putting the puck there and did. And just look at what, Zufo, uh, what, what Ishikov does afterwards. Takes out two defenders, goes around the net, pops it in. Just incredible stuff from, from Russell Ishikov. And in terms of his growth rate, we're going to look at, at my spreadsheet here. It's going to be super nerdy. 
And um, well, if you're not a big fan of spreadsheets, I'm sorry, because I, I definitely am. I'm just trying to find Russin's page, and then we're going to go there. Boom. Russian Scott this year, 26.2 NHLE on the year, which is slightly up from last year and the year before when he was playing in Finland and Germany, respectively. He plateaued in, 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 um, in Europe, that's for sure. But what we're seeing here is that now that the caliber of competition has increased quite significantly, so has Russ Nishikov has increased his uh, out output, if you will, and he's gained 0.8 NHLE on the season. That's imp on, on this career. That's impressive that he keeps on growing at various levels. Look at that jump from playing at UConn to playing in Finland. Excellent stuff. This kid deserves a shot. I'm not sure what we're waiting for. It's probably just like we'll see over a full year what he does. And right now we want our, our other current NHLers to play. Like when Matthew Barzell comes back, Simon Holmstrom's gone. That's that's clear as day. Um, gone as in back to the AHL. And so that's probably why uh, Russin isn't getting a call up right now. There's no need at the moment today. Uh, but I would expect that if he continues this throughout the year and into next season, he's getting a call up. He's, he'll be one of the first guys up. From Russ Nishikov, we go to William Zafou, who is having an excellent first year in the pros. 20 goals, 41 points in 58 games for William Zafou. And remember, just the question for him was like, can he even play at the AHL level? He's playing with 16-year-olds. It was a whole like overage argument that I can't stand. But anyways, he's playing very, very well at the AHL level right now. There's no question about it. Um, it's not consistent. I will say that, right? There's you, When you see recently, he does have four points in the last three games, but there's a four-game stretch where he's got nothing. And then after that, he's got another four, five games where he's got five, seven, eight points. So there are peaks and there are valleys. And as it stands now, I think that the peaks are higher than the valleys are low, which is not bad. You, you, you're going to have that. No one's going to put up exactly one point per game throughout their season unless you're Connor McDavid. And so these players have to manage the peaks and the valleys. And William Zafol seems to have managed the peaks and the valleys pretty darn well this year. Considering one of the valleys was like calling, being called up to the NHL, which he deserved, and then them going like, nope, you're not ready. We're benching you and sending you back basically before the game is done. And he bounced back from that very, very well. So good job, William Zafol, so far in terms of the production and NHLE. Now, when we look at the spreadsheet for William Zafol, let me just bring that up here. I got Maggio's open for some reason. Uh, William Zafol, there we go. William Zafol, 22-point NHLE on the season, which is what we've established already. But the one thing that I want to draw your attention to on this spreadsheet is the growth rate year over year, the difference uh, of the year over year. And William Zafol, my God, every year is growing. Every single season, he's added NHLE by like a decent and healthy margin. Five, three, almost five, six now this year. When the level ramps up, he keeps responding. This isn't going to be a guy who uh, clearly is going to jump from the draft to the NHL, but it's a guy who can very well get there given the time and the resources. He seems to just keep growing and growing at a healthy and decent rate. That doesn't mean that he's, I project him to hit the NHL and be a top six winger going forward. Now, I think he's still going to be a bottom six winger. That's his absolute ceiling, in my opinion. Bottom six winger for me. Um, but again, that's a fifth round pick that could be a bottom six winger. I'm not saying he is going to be one, but the ceiling, the absolute height of, of what I think we get out of Zvolk is a bottom six winger, and that's excellent value for the New York Islanders. From Zufo, we go to Matthew Maggio, who, like Zufo, is absolutely doing the thing, uh, but not at the QMJHL level, but at the OHL level. He leads the league in points with 104. No one else has even 100. He's eight points up on the next best player in terms of production in the OHL. When it comes to goals, he's got 50, the only 50-goal scorer in the league. I'm sure Nolan Burke is going to hit it at some point, but he hasn't yet, and it's only Matthew Maggio who has. When you look at his production of late, guy's on a tear. He's on a nine-game point streak right now with, I, I did it earlier, I think it's 16 points. Let me just do the quick computation live here. So two, four, that's six, eight, 10, 11, 15, 16 points. And when I bring up 
the calculator, 16 over 9, 1.78 points per game lately. Just, he's too good for the OHL. That That's clear. Just look at the shot totals, too. Like, look at that. 9, 7, 4. And he's averaging at least four shots per game, minimum. And, and then it's probably like seven shots per game over the last little spell. Just... He's too good for the OHL level. That's not even a question at this point. It's how good of a pro can he be? And um, I think he's going to be a good AHLer. At the very least, a good AHLer. Can he be an NHLer? Maybe. He's got the skating is better than, than William Zafoy is. I'm not saying it's an elite skater, but his skating is better. Um, so that's already a bonus. He doesn't have the same shot that William Zafoul does, but he's clearly got goal scoring abilities. Um I, I think with, with Matthew Maggio, the Islanders have yet another guy who could crack into the NHL, um, given enough time and resources, which is they're gonna they're gonna give them both. That's just Lou Lamorello's MO. So that that is excellent to see. When it comes to growth for Matthew Maggio, we're gonna go back to the spreadsheet and bring him up. Uh, where is his card here? Matthew Maggio. Boom. There we go. Maggio is a 20, like we said before, NHLE, and he's grown significantly over the last two years. Added 10 and added five this year. Now you're going to say, well, he didn't add anything the year prior. Yeah. Well, they didn't really play last year. These games are all at the, uh, junior elite league in Sweden. So he played in Sweden two years ago when the OHL didn't have a COVID didn't have a season because of COVID. So, excellent stuff for him still putting up points and then just growing, right? So th this guy, like Williams Zafoul, just keeps growing. And so it's going to be exciting to see what they're going to get out of him exactly as things progress. And then we go to Arnaud Zorando, who's got 36 points in 55 games this year. He's basically replicated his production from last year in nine fewer games, right? He had 37 points with 15 goals in 64 games last year. Now he's got it in 55. Uh, when you look at him lately, the production there, he's got four, sorry, three points in five games. Um, not ideal, of course, but he is kind of like bouncing back after coming down to from the NHL, um, where he did very well. Arnaud Zorando's call up, we've talked about already, B, plus, excellent stuff from him. He's going to have a chance to earn a spot next year. I don't know if he'll get it, um, but he's going to provide some steep competition for that spot. When we look at the spreadsheet, let me just bring it up here. Arnaud Zorando has, I'm not going to say plateaued, but he's gotten better this year. He's gotten significantly, sorry, marginally better year over year at the very least, right? So he makes that one big jump when he goes pro here from 9.7 NHLE to 8. Uh, and then he kind of plateaus last year. And now he's taken a little bit of a step up. 1.37, 3.57 added to his NHLE from 21-22. So Arnaud Zarando is growing, but I would expect this to start slowing down. We have to remember, this is a six-round pick from 2017. He's been in the system a while. He's a 1999 birth, so he's with 24 right now. So he's on the older side of the prospect pool. Um Barely a prospect, if you even consider him that. Final one, defenseman Samuel Bolduc, who's got 33 points in 54 games this year and 10 goals, which is wildly above what he did last year at 7 points in 57 games. He's got more goals this year than he had points last year. Just incredible stuff. It has dried up of late. The production that is, he's got, what is it, 6 games without a point right now. That's... It is what it is. Um, I'm, I'm not too worried about him. We're seeing the real Samuel Budzik this year. He, he got that NHL call-up, and he did very well with that call-up. I think he's going to push hard for that third left-handed defenseman spot next season. Uh, so Sebastian Ajo will look out, as well as Sebastian Ajo was doing. Samuel Budzik's got size. He's got skating, and he's got a shot. And Sebastian and, and, uh, Ajo has got a few of those things, but not all of them, specifically size. So that's something very well in, in Samuel Bolzik's favor. When we go to the spreadsheet, to the spreadsheet, uh, when we look at Samuel Bolzik, you're seeing that he's made up the loss that he had last year. So he, you know, he, when he went pro, an extra 12 points is NHLE. And then he lost it all last year because he was not good last year. It was... 
I don't know what the hell happened last season, but it was awful. Well, he's made it all up again at 15 and an extra 15 points basically to his NHL league this season uh, to, you know, round it up to 19. So, and that's six games without a point, right? Recently. And remember NHL is tied strictly to pr- production points per game. Uh, so, Samuel Budzik is looking very good. And we have to remember, he did play six NHL games, only scoring a point, one goal. Um, that That is going to impact his score. That's five games without a point at the highly rated NHL level. So that's going to drop down the score al- alone. If you just look at his um, his AHL production, let's just do, do that here. His AHL production, and we'll, we'll do zero... He's at a 19.49 NHLE, so he rounds it up to about 20. He gains an extra point because he spent six games in the NHL scoring a goal. He spent five games not doing something, and it dropped him down basically a full point. So that tells you everything you need to know about Samuel Budzik's season. It has been excellent. Good job by him. So those are my five top prospects in the prospect pool. Of course, tied strictly to NHLE. You add the eye test to it, and I'm sure this would fluctuate. At least mine would fluctuate, that's for sure. Let me know what your top five are in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button. And if you have, thank you, thank you, thank you.